That's how I got into it. One minute a regular cabbie, the next a respected mafioso. You were all right with killing people? Usually people have a problem with that. You know, I ain't one of those people with a thirst for blood. I don't need violence in my life, and I don't look for trouble, but I also don't have any remorse. They wanted to outsmart us, so we had to outsmart them. No excuses. It was all the same to me. I wasn't interested in the fates of other people. Everybody said it was just business, and that the family sticks together. It was different from living alone and nobody giving a damn about you. Suddenly you're respected by all the people you meet. Everybody knows you can help them, but you can also destroy their lives. And everybody tries to ingratiate themselves to you. And what about the police? You just walked away, just like that, from a massacre. Didn't you have any problem with this? You work for the police. You ought to know. You know, the Mafia runs the whole city. The Salieri family makes over 25 million bucks every year. The papers were full of it, but nobody saw nothing, if they wanted to stay alive. We paid off the bureaucrats six grand a month. Your bosses had liquor at trade price and got payoffs for special jobs from both Salieri and Morello. Case closed, lack of evidence. Cops would even move shipments of drink for us. I guess you'd have heard something about that. So what about your two friends? Well, they were better off than you'd think. Salieri had a good doc for his boys, and it's not like he ever asked any questions. In a few weeks, they'd be healthy and back on the streets again. The only one who worried us was Morello. He wanted to be the big cheese, which Salieri couldn't let him do. Salieri had no intention of being in second place. You know, a person becomes a Don because of his thirst for power and he doesn't care about any other rules than his own. That's how it is, Detective. So he'd be his own boss, independent of the police, of the state, of anyone. That's why a person becomes a Don. Salieri and Morello both wanted it all. They kept sparring with each other, but they both knew that if it all blew up, it would be hell. The big difference between them was in their methods. I heard a little story about Morello. I, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, sir. Um, you I idiot. mean it. Do you know what you've done? Do you know how much that car cost? I, uh, I was driving slowly, Mr. Morello. Uh, I don't know how, uh... Do you mean to say that I... I crashed into your car? Uh, uh, no. Sir, I, uh, I only... I wanted... Uh, no, sir, I... No! Fast dude gets... In. My. Way. Salieri built his respect as a businessman. Everybody knew that they didn't need to fear him if they did what they should. They knew that if they needed something, they could come to Mr. Salieri. So Salieri made friends, often helped people with various problems, and expected the same in return. When somebody crossed him, they broke a cardinal rule, and everybody knew what would happen. Morello was just a mean bastard. He built his power through violence. Even his friends feared him. Most people just tried to avoid him. Listen, Tommy, I have a delicate job for you. I don't know anyone else who could do it better than you. You're a good driver, and you have experience. Well, to make it simple, tomorrow all the best motors are going to race at the city track. And I bet on one kid who's been a favorite up until now. I helped him along in his career a little. I like fast cars, and I said to myself that I could make back a little on that investment. You understand? 
And then Ralphie starts saying that some European has come over, and his car is certain to win. Ralphie knows cars. He's real good with them. But otherwise, he's a complete moron. What, he couldn't have told me before I bet on the kid? But still, what the hell is a guy, God knows from where, doing here? These are American races. Me and the consigliere here were thinking about what to do, because a lot of our boys have bet the same as me, and they certainly wouldn't be happy if they lost their dough. And how would that make me look? Like an old idiot. Tommy, I can't let that happen. We thought, with our consigliere, about what to do with it. If something happens to him, that's no way. It won't be fair play. I won't enjoy my winning at all. Ralph told me that he knows a guy who guards the racetrack garage. Tonight, you're gonna go there and take this European's car to a but mechanic who knows his way around these machines. He'll take a look at theirs and maybe improve ours. As soon as he's finished working on it, you'll take it back. It's important that the car is back in its place before anybody catches on. And don't even think but about crashing it or getting I... caught by the cops. Are we clear? Yes, boss. If you pull it off, You'll, of course, get a share of the winnings. Now go. Ralph will tell you where and how. Hey, Ralphie, you got some news about this job? Sh sh sure, Tommy. You need to go to the s s city racetrack and borrow that m m m m m motor there. My f f friend b b b Bobby works there. You go around back there and uh, along the w way is the gate g gatehouse. T -t 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 Tell Bobby that the Ralph sent you and Bobby will take you to the car. It's already been agreed w w w with him. And then? Y y y you just have to take it to the auto service of my f f friend Luca Bertoni. It's in Newark under the Giuliani Bridge. He'll t t t t t take a look at it and, and t t tune it a little, and then you just take it back. This should be easy enough. But you you, you got to get it done before 1:15 a.m. when the g g guard changes, so that nobody n n n knows that somebody drove the motor in the night. There can't even be a scratch on it, and 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 try to avoid the cops. They 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 mustn't catch you. Hmm. And how'll I get there? Well, I got something new in. Ain't no big thing to s s swipe one. B -b 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 watch. You just stick a piece of w w wire in here and twist it a, a, a little and you get inside where you gotta join these two wires. Yeah, it shouldn't be a problem. Thanks, Ralphie. Now don't you go sparing the gas, Tom. <laughs>
Evening. You must be Ralph's friend. That's right. Okay, we'll take your car. Go in and over to the garage. Okay, we're here, buddy. Come on, we haven't got a lot of time. Okay, is that it? Yeah, buddy, be real careful. There can't even be a scratch on it. And avoid the cops like the devil, because this car will be real obvious. That's right. In about half an hour, the second guard will come. So you gotta be back by then, buddy. And be real careful, that car goes fast. Maybe it's the fastest car in the world, who knows? Sure, Bobby, no problem. I'll take care of it in a half hour.
Hey there, you're from Mr. Salieri, right? I'm Lucas Bertoni. Hi, I'm Tom. They say you can take the bite out of this monster. I reckon so. Well, you'd better get moving. We only have 27 minutes left. Hmm, that ain't much time. We'll see what could be done. You can hang out a while. Hey, how's it going in there? Just finished. You can go. Uh, but you're gonna have to hurry. It ain't gonna run as well as when you first brought it in. Thanks. Mr. Salieri appreciates your work. Sure, give my regards to him. If he ever needs anything again, I'd be glad to help out. I'd bet on the same driver as him.
So you pulled it off, buddy. And the car isn't even scratched. Thanks, Bobby. It really was the fastest car in the world. Sure is. We're lucky you managed it. I bet on the Don's car, too. It seems everybody did. I bet on it. So did almost everybody in my neighborhood. I figure the driver's pretty important, too. Sure. Well, I won't keep you. Good night. Take care, Bobby. Thanks for the help.
Hey, Luigi. Hey, Tommy. Where is everybody? They're all at the track. You're late. I needed to get a little sleep after last night's job. Sure. Hello? Yes? Sorry, just got in. Sure. That's for you, Tom. Hello? Frank here. Tom? You did well yesterday, but now we need your help again. Come over to the racing track right away. That guy who was supposed to win the race got his arm broken by some thug. Probably no coincidence. Anyway, you're gonna have to race. But, but, Frank, I... Tom, it's a half an hour before the race. So I don't have time to teach someone else how to drive. Christ, Tom, this concerns a big bag of money. I hope you understand that. Yeah, okay. Frank... So I expect to see you here at the track in a few minutes. You don't look too excited. That's because I ain't... 